This is New Cap News with Mike Baden. Good evening. Thanks for joining us, Emmett. Bobcats had an anti-bullying game last night, but they didn't really listen to the message. No, there were a lot of fights. It was almost like a shinny game, the amount of fights <laughs> and goals there were. I'll have highlights after. Perfect. Can't wait for that, I guess. <laughs> and, and Elisa, great day out there today. Again, explain, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was pretty warm outside. We did get down to a wind chill of minus 28 this morning. But from there, it only got warmer. And I mean, that sunshine, it just brought... Just made it so, yeah, it just made it so mm -hmm. much warmer. <laughs> but right now in Lloydminster, we're sitting at minus 5. Our winds are coming in from the south-southwest at a calm 11 kilometers per hour, giving us a wind chill of minus 10. And just like the past couple of days, our skies are clear around the region. Lakeland's currently at minus 3 and minus 5 in the Battle Fords. I'll have more on your local forecast coming up in a few minutes. The Vic Juba Community Theatre is at it again, and this time they're getting people in the mood for Valentine's Day with an evening of romantic comedy. Elise Cox has more. We cannot really love anyone with whom we never laugh. And Lakeland College's drama department used this idea to celebrate Valentine's Day, and they're doing it with style. Valentine's Evening of Romantic Comedies is actually a night of, of theatre. Um, we've got two short one-act plays that are happening, both by Anton Chekhov, and um, we have a dinner theatre uh, prior to the show. The plays are about love and comedic aspects of the ups and downs of relationships. Just a great night of theatre, especially for people that it's their first night out. We don't have a lot of theatre in Lloydminster, so this is a great opportunity for people to get their first taste of theatre and uh, really walk away with a positive experience. Couples, friends and people of all ages came out to enjoy this night of great food and entertainment. We've got some of the students in town, we've got young people, as well as uh, uh, some of the older folks that have been coming to theatre for years, so it's really a great a great uh, collective audience, a little bit of everybody. This was a celebration of love and Valentine's Day that didn't leave behind any lonely hearts. Elise Cox, New Cap News. The ReStore is a local place where consumers can purchase gently used furniture as well as many other products for less, with all proceeds going to Habitat for Humanity. And they had a special fundraiser yesterday. Carrie McCullough has more. ReStore is a crucial part of fundraising for Habitat for Humanity. And yesterday, they added a little something extra to bring in customers. It's a small in-store fundraiser for Habitat for Humanity, um, trying to bring people into the store, make them aware of, of the store. Um, there's things going on, um, Plinko Game, where you can have discounts on your purchases, um, cookie decorating for the kids. Well, we're kind of trying to have a little bit of fun, do some fundraising to give the people a chance to get a discount on some of the products we have and we do have some specials. Restore also had some special guests to sign autographs for the youngsters. Uh, we're just down here at Habitat Humanity. They're uh, having an event and we're down here signing autographs for the kids and whoever else comes down. It's really good, you know, you get to see the kids and you're kind of like their heroes and they look up to you a lot so it feels pretty good. Habitat for Humanity concentrates on building homes for families who cannot afford them. And with every fundraiser, they hope to get a little closer to building a brand new home in Lloydminster. We would like to build four homes for the, the families this year. Volunteers are a big part of Habitat for Humanity. The restore and fundraising would not be as successful without them. We're just the, the money-making arm, so to speak, at the ReStore for the Habitat. So whatever money we raise is spent for people that can't afford the homes on a regular basis. So that's what we do. Without us, it wouldn't happen, put it that way. Carrie McCullough, New Cap News. Well, Lloyd Mr. Bobcats were at home last night, wrapping up back-to-back -back games against the Drayton Valley Thunder. The last three games between the two teams had been decided by one goal, including Friday's 2-1 overtime victory over the, for the Cats. Saturday's game was a little different. We pick the game up in the final minute of the first. Bobcats up 2-0 on the power play and they do some more damage. Jeff Lorenz scores to get his second point of the night. Second period. Bobcats keep the momentum going. Corey Chisholm in all alone. He makes no mistake 4-0 for the Cats. And this is when the game gets a little out of hand. After a brutal hit by Luke Medill, Kyle Harris drops the gloves and less than five minutes later, Mitch Gartner gets in a scrap. Things don't go the way he planned. Scrappy game. Then, late in the second period, 5-2 Cats, Lyndon Lewis gets the breakaway pass. Appears to be a great save, but it trickles just past Cody Nicolay for another Bobcats goal. Before the period is out, couple more fights. 
Jeff Lorenz answers the call against Austin McKay. He finished the night with two goals, an assist, and a fight. Someone get this man a fillet of fish. Josh Atkinson also scrapped later on. Third period, check out this sweet sauce by Corey Chisholm to Kyle Bowen. Perfect pass, perfect finish. Then Kyle Harris on the PK, wins the battle on the boards, finds Topher Flanagan. Bobcats win this game of Chimney 10 to four. And after the W, the Bobcats were happy with their play and stunned at the Thunder. I'm gonna have to watch this tape because I know that team is a hell of a lot better than that and they just wouldn't take a night off. I think they probably suspect that they're gonna play us in the playoffs and uh, I don't know, I'm very uh, oh, apprehensive when I think anybody, uh, we're not uh, that kind of score ahead of that team. Yeah, I'm not too sure uh, where their focus was tonight, but definitely not uh, a characteristic of the Drain Valley team. So we, we know that we can expect more in the playoffs from them. So definitely we uh, will definitely be ready to play a more fiery team in the playoffs. The Lloydminster Border Kings were in Bentley last night, hoping to sweep their second round series against the Generals and become Chinook League champs. The Kings fell behind early in this one, trailing 4-1 after the first period. Unlike Thursday's home game, Lloydminster had no comeback this time around. They lost big 6-3. The Border Kings were outshot 45-26 and gave up three power play goals and a shorthanded marker. So that set up a deciding third game at the Civic Center this evening. The winner becoming the 2012 Chinook Hockey League champions. Promising news for the Border King fans, they've only lost back-to-back -back games one time all season. The score after or in the second period is 2-1 for the Border Kings. Summer is still months away, but that doesn't mean that the softball season has to wait. Dozens of area kids are honing their skills this offseason in the Lloydminster Minor Ball Association Winter Softball Camp. This is the second year the L This is the second year the LMBA has offered competitive winter sessions for local athletes. Last year, two dozen kids came out to learn. This year, the camp expanded their age groups and have attracted 80 players from all around the region. We just want to encourage kids to come out for the love of the game, whether it be for that competitive experience or uh, just to learn how to play and have fun at a recreational level. The coaches at these sessions include former national team players and guys with American college ball experience. This is translating to greater competitive success throughout the organization. Last year, the LNBA boosted the number of competitive teams from one to four. This year, they are looking at adding another under-16 team. If we're at the same level of competitiveness, but we continue to bring in kids and, and give them the love of the game, we're quite happy with that. One of the players who has reaped the benefits of the winter camp is Daisy Patakin. The teenager has played at the Saskatchewan First Nations Summer Games. She says the camp has helped her stay focused on the coming season. Um, just practice and practice and practice and just keep setting goals for myself to get to the next level and the next and the next. <laughs> the LMBA is holding registration for spring sessions February 28th and March 14th at the service center from 6.30 to 8 p.m. The Lakeland Wrestlers men's basketball team continues rolling through the ACAC showing why they are the top team in the country. Last night the Wrestlers won their 18th straight game this season 119-77 over Briarcrest College. Amazingly, the 32-point victory is the average score the wrestlers have beaten their opponents by this year. The wrestler women also finished the weekend with another victory, although with a much lower score. The women sit securely in second place in the North Division standings, four points up on Augustana. And the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am wrapped up today in California. Plenty of interest heading into the final day. Charlie Wee headed into the final round chasing his first PGA Tour win with golf's biggest names chasing him. Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson both in the hunt and paired together. We started the day off with a three putt from four feet out giving him a double bogey while Phil Mickelson went on a tear erasing a six stroke deficit to win his 40th career tournament. Only the ninth player ever to do so. And Tiger Woods again struggled on Sunday shooting a plus 375 to finish tied for 15th. And that's it for sports.
Makeup provided by Vivid Hair and Aesthetics.